live in Danville to begin our debate coverage at noon. A beautiful day there in the city, Bill. Oh. You said it. Good day to you, Stacy, and hello, everybody, from right in front of the Norton Center, which is the venue for tonight's debate. We're in Danville, a quaint all-American city, the geographic center of Kentucky, and the center of the political world for today. It's a beautiful place to put democracy on display today. Good morning from WKYT. I'm Bill Bryant along with Stacy Ellison and this is continuing special coverage from 27 News First. The death toll in Kentucky now is at least 14 from these horrible storms that have raked through. And as the sun rises across the bluegrass, a clearer picture of the devastation these storms have left behind. Some communities at this point, no more. We're hearing from yeah. the strong winds and the storms that have blown through. We're also though getting, as we speak, the message and the images of communities coming together to comfort each other and to already begin that rebuilding process. It has been quite an evening. A lot of uh, local officials have been up all night, a state of emergency uh, statewide throughout the Commonwealth by Governor Steve Beshear, who is already leaving out to, with the Adjutant General to go this morning and tour the hard hit areas. Of those 14 fatalities in Kentucky, four are in Laurel, four in Menifee, three in Morgan, and three in Kenton. Those are the numbers we have so far, and we hope, of course, that no, no more are discovered as this uh, morning goes along. So a new poll out today shows the difference in the presidential campaign could be a gender gap and a former Republican presidential candidate makes a stop in Kentucky tonight. WKYT's Bill Bryant has the bottom line. Good evening. The candidates for president are holed up and studying hard for tomorrow night's first debate of the 2012 campaign. And a new poll out today shows a gender gap as a key reason President Obama is leading in most national polls. The Quinnipiac University poll shows the president holds an 18 point advantage over Republican Mitt Romney among women. They make up half the electorate. The nationwide numbers were Obama 56 percent to Romney's 38 percent among women. Now, on the other hand, men back Romney by about 10 points. It was a large sample of 1,912 likely voters who were contacted by both cell phones and landlines. Former Republican presidential candidate Mike Huckabee, the former governor of Arkansas and a Fox TV talk show host, is in Kentucky this evening and he'll be back for the weekend. He's at Somerset Christian School this evening, but Huckabee will return to the Commonwealth over the weekend. He'll headline a fundraiser for House Republicans who are hoping to pick up 10 seats in the November election. That would give them control of the state house for the first time in 91 years. And there will be more coming up on the CBS Evening News in just a little bit about today's court ruling that blocks Pennsylvania from putting a new voter ID law in place. Democrats say the requirement was a ploy to cost President Obama votes. Republicans say the law requiring a photo ID was to prevent voter fraud. That's today's bottom line. Bill Bryant, WKYT. And of course, uh, one of the questions I've been asked over and over and over is, can I go to the debate? Well, <laughs> WKYT anchor Amber Philpott is with us now, and you'll be here for the coverage throughout the day. The answer to that question is probably not, right? No, but it is the hottest <laughs> ticket in town, right? Oh, yeah, exactly. You know, we're both Kentuckians. What a great way to oh, showcase our you. home place you know beautiful place and you know the the tourism people even came by and they said there's only one Kentucky and there's only one vice presidential debate and it, as you said it is a hard ticket to get that's right and speaking of some students really wanted to get in and yesterday they had their chance and she is right the governor to a tour several of these very hard hit areas and it's a widespread area uh, certainly from what happened in southeastern Kentucky up there to a far eastern Kentucky there are problems in Boone County and northern Kentucky and even some issues in the Louisville area so uh, uh, there is a lot to uh, see and assess and try to compile reports that eventually will no doubt be turned in uh, for a federal declaration of uh, emergency. You know, the governor on his job there, but for many on the ground in these situations, you hear that seeing um, high level, if you will, officials do so gives them the idea that someone sees them, someone hears, someone is listening, and someone is working on their behalf. And that means a lot in these times. And this governor has had a lot of those uh, disasters to deal with in his uh, term, certainly from uh, tornado outbreaks that have happened before to uh, hurricane force winds that came through Louisville to ice storms. Uh, it's been a, a difficult uh, tenure, certainly in that regard, uh, for Governor Bashir. All right, we're back in a moment with more coverage from WKYT of this deadly tornado outbreak in Kentucky. This is Kentucky Newsmakers with Bill Bryant. 
Hello there from WKYT News. I'm Bill Bryant, hoping your weekend is going well. A busy program today before the November election. The independent candidate for Congress in Central Kentucky is here. Randolph Vance will talk about his low budget but focused effort to try to win away the votes from Democrat Ben Chandler and Republican Andy Barr. Candidate Vance coming up in just a few minutes. But first, Kentucky Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes is here. She says the Commonwealth is ready to run an election that will likely see record turnout. Turnout. A huge snowfall last week in eastern Kentucky presented some challenges. Her team is confident it can overcome all of that. We'll try to answer your questions about the election today with Secretary of State Grimes, and we welcome her. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Bill, for having me. We'll point out you are a Democrat. You're appearing today in your nonpartisan role as Kentucky Secretary of State. I want to begin there just very quickly. Is that difficult to do? Uh, this is going to be the case uh, up and down the, uh, across this country this week. There are partisan elected Secretary of State or Chief elected uh, election officials who will have to be overseeing these races. How do you set that aside? Well, obviously I was elected uh, on, in a partisan manner, uh, but when you put on uh, the Secretary of State hat, you serve as the Chief Election Official, and I think Kentuckians need and want and deserve to have an individual that they can trust, uh, that regardless of your political affiliation is encouraging all Kentuckians uh, to have their, vo their voice heard, and most importantly, making sure that every vote counts, again, regardless of political affiliation. Affiliation. And it's something that I strive to do because I think uh, Kentuckians want to make sure that they have someone that they can trust is making the calls but not trying to play in the game at the same time. 